Today we're going to take a couple minutes to walk through how to fix issues with Wirecast when things go wrong. If you've seen our other video, Tips for Livestream Volunteers, most of this will sound familiar. I hope this helps solves most of those hiccups, and be sure to let me know on Slack or in person if there's something else that we need to address. Let's talk about what it looks like when things are working properly. When everything is working right, the video from the camera should come through smoothly and the audio meter should be active, showing those green animated bars. Facebook and YouTube are looking good and all is well in the world. Note that sometimes the preview area will be slightly less smooth than the live area, but as long as the video isn't freezing every few seconds and the audio meters are moving up and down, we're golden. Now let's talk about what can go wrong. If the audio meters are blank and someone is currently playing an instrument or using the microphone, we know right away that the audio isn't working. If the video feed from the ATEM isn't displaying anything, if it's black or it shows a big red question mark, we know that the video isn't working. Another thing to watch out for is freezing. Not always, but seemingly randomly, the video in Wirecast will start freezing. You will notice the frame stutter, then freeze for a second, then jump ahead a few more seconds. As soon as you notice this happening, you know something isn't working right. The easiest way to fix these settings is pretty simple and it's worked for us almost every time. Usually, all you have to do is close Wirecast and open it again. But it's very important to wait 15 to 30 seconds even after closing Wirecast before opening it up again. It will feel like a really long time in the heat of service, but make sure you wait that 15 or so seconds, or else it might not help. Once Wirecast is open again, you should see the clear video signal and the green audio bars moving up and down again in the preview and live area. After restarting, make sure to select the color correction shot and press go to make it live. If all looks good, press the stream button to reconnect the broadcast to Facebook and YouTube. If the video still isn't showing up or there's still no audio indicated by those green bars, you'll need to repeat the process again of closing, waiting, and reopening. The first time usually works for us, but there have been instances where we've had to restart the software two or even three times before it starts working properly. If the audio and video are not showing up no matter what, we need to check elsewhere. If you were to follow the cables starting at the eight. You'll find that the program output leaves the ATEM unit and plugs into what's called an SDI to HDMI converter. The next cable plugs into what's called a capture card. This capture card is what lets us plug our video directly into the computer through a USB cable. Our audio for the ATEM runs separately, coming from the headphone jack of the ATEM directly into the capture card. Make sure all these cables are secured snugly. The SDI cable actually locks in place, so it's unlikely that those came loose. Make sure the USB cable is fully plugged into both the capture card and the computer. Do the same for the HDMI cable. On the computer, open up the Windows Start menu in the bottom left corner and open Desktop Video Setup. There should be a shortcut saved in the menu, but you can also start typing the name of the software to search for it. Once it opens up, you should see the image of the device, Intensity Shuttle, large and centered. If that image appears there, we know that the capture card is properly connected and the issue isn't there, it's with Wirecast. You'll likely just need to close and reopen Wirecast a few more times, or possibly restart the whole computer. Now if the capture card is not displaying in the desktop video setup software, you'll need to restart the whole computer. Open the start menu and select restart from the power menu. Another note about the audio. Every bit of our audio comes directly from the sound mixer and right into the ATEM. On the sound mixer, there's what's called a matrix output specifically for our broadcast. You may need to talk with the sound volunteer to ensure that the broadcast matrix is turned up. If you need to verify that there is audio coming from the sound mixer, look at the ATEM software control by talking with the ATEM volunteer. In the bottom of their software, you'll find a tab for audio. Here, one of the audio meters will be labeled XLR. If you see an audio signal showing up there, we know that the sound mixer is sending audio and the issue is actually on our end. 
Hopefully these tips help you handle most of the issues that come up during a live stream. There are many pieces of the puzzle, and I know it can be a little intimidating if you're unfamiliar with all of this. My goal in making these videos is to cover as much as I can, but the reality is there will be rough services with a few mistakes. The most important thing we can do is take note of what goes wrong, remember what happened, and learn from each experience. Thank you so much for all you do to serve God's mission.